Okay. Now, I'm, you know, you, you know people, we don't always push this notion as hard as we can, but in a strict Marshallian view of the world, one thing you'll notice is that there are no quantities in our expression for the demand for x1. So for example, when I'm thinking about the demand for toys, I don't have the number of kids in here. Right? If I'm thinking about household demand for toys, I don't have the number of kids. Or if I'm thinking about the demand for gasoline, I don't have the number of cars. Right? What does that mean I'm assuming? I'm assuming that kids don't matter, cars don't matter? Yeah? No, I'm not holding fixed the number of kids or cars. Yeah. It's incorporated in prices. Right. So what am I implicitly assuming? Like, for example, take the gasoline case. What am I assuming? I, well, I don't have the quantity of cars in here. I got the price of cars in here. That you're optimizing. That you're optimizing. Therefore, the cars are responding. As I change the price of gasoline, the response that the Marshallian demand curve is going to give me in terms of the price of the quantity of gasoline. So I lower the price of gas from $3 to $2. That's going to increase the quantity of gasoline, presumably. It's going to obey what we call the law of demand, even though we haven't talked about it yet. I think we know enough to know that's where we're headed. What are we assuming about cars? Implicitly in this, in this formulation of the problem. Number can change, and not just the number of cars, the kinds of cars. Our cars are what's going to happen. Our cars are going to get bigger. We're going to have more of them. We're going to do all kinds of stuff. Now, we're implicitly assuming that the number of cars, as well as the number of buses, as well as where I live, as well as all them other things, are changing as I change the, any one of these prices. Everybody, people understand that? That's the idea. The idea here is that these are mediated through the prices, okay? Now, we'll come back later and say you can put quantities in here and consistently with this demand system here, but we're not ready to do that yet. But as stated, we're assuming those things are adjusting. Well, you might say with cars, well, that may be not such a great assumption, but, you know, you could do it. What about toys? Yeah, exactly. You could say, well, the number of kids are going to adjust, right? That, we got that adjusting in here, too, right? We got all that stuff. So there's a lot going on here in this demand system. Just, just wanted to point that out, okay? So sometimes when you're doing empirical work, you might want to think about whether, is that really what I'm looking at when I see the data? Am I really letting all those things vary? And we'll come back to say how things will change if those things all don't vary. All right, any questions before I move forward? <coughs> yes? Well, but, but that wouldn't, that, probably what will happen if the price of toys goes down is we'll have more kids and more kit toys per kit, right? That's probably what we would expect. But why would we think that we wouldn't get a response in the number of kids? But, but empirically, we would think that's part of the story, right? You could think about a world where the number of kids is fixed, right? You could think about that. But let's say, and in the case of toys, you might argue, when we talk a little more about magnitudes and what determines magnitudes, you might argue maybe this isn't going to be that important, that the number of kids are going to change. But let's say I did a different question. Let's say I made daycare cheaper. I lowered the cost of taking care of kids. Probably wouldn't want to hold the number of kids constant in that experiment, right? If I'm going to say I'm going to go from a world where I'm going to have the substantial subsidy to taking care of kids, holding the number of kids constant probably wouldn't be a very good assumption, right? Now, you might think about why it might work OK for toys and not work OK for daycare. You might want to think about why. We'll come back to that. Hopefully, something we'll put on the board today will help you understand that. But nonetheless, um, 
I, I definitely want you to know that these demand curves are really, and we sometimes forget this, we're sort of, you know, the, the, the story here is that when one price changes, I'm not just responding on that margin. I'm adjusting my whole bundle to adapt to that price. And one of the things that, you know, so, sort of you get as you start looking at the world is that often price changes have broad effects. They affect not just that good. They affect lots of other things that people do. Okay? As computers have gotten cheaper, it's not just changed the way we calculate, you know, numbers or how we do spreadsheets or whatever. It's affected a wide range of our life and the goods that we consume and, and how our lives are organized. I mean, it's just had broad effects. And that's the kind of thing you want to think about happening. 